One of the things that still bothers me about this time in my life, and that keeps me up sometimes at night, is were we complicit in Lucas' crimes? My name is Mark Lewis. I'm the director of Don't Fuck With Cats. It's a documentary series. It's a real story. But it functions really or, or almost like a thriller. And it's the story of the almost kind of real-time evolution of someone who becomes a kind of psychopathic killer on the internet. He broke not even an unwritten, a written rule of the internet it's out on 4chan and 7chan, which is... Don't fuck with cats. The perpetrator in this case was somebody who started um, abusing, killing cats uh, in videos on the internet. But it's really about the, the sleuthing that goes on to try and hunt him down. I wasn't going to stop until I found him. I've got this fucker. This was a real cat and mouse story, but most importantly had something very important to say. Um, about the internet, about internet culture. Initially, it was conceived as a sort of 90-minute feature documentary. But as soon as we went into production, we really began to see that this was a story that had kind of many more tentacles. I mean, we were constantly discovering new things which were changing our, our mind in the course of the production. I mean, at times we thought, my God, did he really do it? And we really did go on an extraordinary kind of roller coaster journey of our own. I noticed that they had also liked a video for the movie Catch me if you can, which to me I took as a big, hey, hey, you're never gonna catch me, ha, huh? fuck you. This was a story of a, of, a, of a man who perpetrated crimes on the internet in order to get people to come after him. And the more people that clicked and liked and came after him, the worse things he did. And that tells you something about internet culture and social media culture today, that we're all obsessed with clicking and liking things. In a way, this is a kind of perverse version of Instagram or perverse version of the Kardashians. OK, this person wants to play a game of cat and mouse, and I'm up for that. The question, you know, why did we choose to focus on the internet sleuth detectives? They were there right at the beginning, and they were there right at the end. And I think in terms of framing the film, we had our kind of internet protagonist, but inevitably at some point in time, when the story becomes not just sort of, you know, playing around on the internet, trying to hunt someone down, but rather a real world story with real victims, the baton then gets passed from these internet detectives to real world detectives. Both internet detectives and real world detectives are both sleuthing away and detecting to try and put together the whole puzzle by the end. There are always in any film or series, people, you know, that it's difficult for them to come on camera. In the case of Benjamin Zhu, the, the, the best friend of the victim, um, Jun Lin, you know, it's traumatic to come and bear your soul as he did. Um, his interview is incredibly moving and I'm eternally grateful that he was able to speak about his friend because I don't think anybody could have communicated what he did in the way that he did. But it's hard. How's it going? It's going pretty good. How yeah. about yourself? Good. Vegas sucks. <laughs> I don't think I have ever, or ever will, film you know a pair like Deanna Thompson and John Green. I mean, they were an extraordinary double act. They are chalk and cheese. Um, and yet, they found this extraordinary common purpose, I think. I think they sort of, to some degree, all of the people in that group somewhat saved one another. They were sort of bound by the horror of, of what had happened and what they were doing and their determination. You know, it became almost an obsession for them, I think. The, the deeper they got, the more, the more weeks and months that they spent on it, it became their lives. At one point, this isn't in the film, Deanna Thompson got a message. She knew it was from him. She suspected it was from Luca at the time. And weirdly, it was this quote from Nietzsche, which said, whoever fights monsters should see to it in the process he does not become a monster. And if you gaze long enough into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back at you. And what that means is, what the whole, the whole point is, is that the more obsessed you become in hunting the monster, you almost become the monster. Tell You become as ugly and obsessive as the monster himself. And I think that was this sort of extraordinary moment for her when she realised, my God, you know, I've become, it, my, wor my world has become so dark. I've inhabited the world of this, you know, kitten killer and murderer for so long, or this, w w uh, this wannabe murderer at the so point that I'm beginning to think like him. I'm beginning to sort of feel like him. 
We had, fortunately, thanks to them, this extraordinary archive of real information, real posts, real comments. We had it all, you know, it was all sort of screenshotted and so on, but we wanted to bring that alive. And it actually, there's great drama and great personality and character in what people write, what people say, what words they choose, and how they write it, how quickly it comes out. We were trying to show how they felt, in, even in the way she would type something out. They told us what had happened in interview, but you know, though that we wanted to make their Facebook comments, the communications between them, as dramatic as real life, as personality fueled as they had communicated in the interview, and that was the whole point of, of the way we presented those things. It's hiding a lot of his face, but you can see like fringy banged hair, and he's putting them into one of those vacuum seal bags. Part of the story of the film is of um, the kitten killing videos and the murder video itself. They are horrific. We thought long and hard, okay, A, we knew that we would never show them in the documentary. The certain frames them at the beginning before the, the killings of the animals or the, or the murder happened, we could show, and there were certain clues when you d dive deep into a particular image, certain area of the image where there is a clue, we knew we would, we could show those kind of things, but obviously we never wanted to show the murder, um, nor the deaths of the animals either, because that would be gratuitous and cruel and unnecessary. But we needed to convey uh, how powerful it was, how emotional it was for people when they first watched these animal abuse videos. Um, because you needed to understand why the internet, you know, was so inflamed to come after him. So we talked with, John Green had watched them many times, Deanna, strangely, had never watched, she loves animals, she loves cats, she'd never watched the videos all the way through them, through. She'd, she'd analysed them frame by frame and found pieces of evidence, but she'd never watched it the whole way through because it was, would be, she thought, too traumatic for her. But we talked about it and how important it was to convey that emotion, and she, with us, agreed that it was important to do it because she needed to make, you may need to make the viewer understand this is the reaction that, you know, that people had, that my comrades in arms had when we watched it, and this is why we came off. This is what motivated us to go after. I, it took me ages to watch it, actually. Um, I'd been working on the story for some time, I'd seen frames and things, and I really sort of slightly dreaded it, really. But it was important to watch because this was a story of an investigation. And only by watching did not only I understand the clues that the detectives were seeing or the animal activists were seeing in the videos, but we saw clues ourselves. There is an enormous twist in the third episode, one that you just will not see coming. Um, and there are many clues in the murder video that only we detected when we watched it. It was a pretty um, horrific thing to do and it still stays with me now. I mean, I think that video effect has affected so many people, uh, including ourselves. Hi, my name is Luca. Magnot is my last name, M-A-G-N-O-T-T-A. -T -T Did we ever want to film Luca Magnotta? We had some correspondence for him. We didn't instigate the um, correspondence with him. We decided not to do an interview with him, or to, uh, sorry, not to try and ask for an interview with him. This was a f series about somebody doing terrible things in order to court celebrity, and that to give him a platform would be, be us just feeding into that. Luca is in a prison in a kind of far flung corner of Quebec, in the north of Quebec, and I know that he's kept away from internets and computers for obvious reasons. Uh, so whether he would ever see the film, I don't know. For us, the show was not really about him. The show was really about the internet sleuths who were tracking him down. And it is the story of, you know, the poor unwitting man, Jin Min, who was, you know, so cruelly murdered. It's been an extraordinary personal journey making this. You can't make a series about someone, you know, who's been killed in such a horrific way and have watched, seen things that I've seen without it affecting me very, very personally. We're dealing with an incredibly traumatic event with incredibly traumatic footage, having to see it, having to deal with it. And I think it was just important, I think, that we kind of handled the whole story with kid gloves and tried to be as, as sensitive as we possibly could. You at home watching a whole fucking documentary about Luca Magnata. Are you complicit? There is this um, sort of slightly daring moment of filmmaking where right at the very, very end of the series in the third episode where Deanna turns to the camera and addresses the viewer, addresses you. 
This is a complicated story of internet activists who may have in some way fueled the, the, the killer. You know, to what degree were they complicit in that? It was so important that we address that. I mean, literally head on. You know, equally, we're making a television series about it. You know, are we kind of feeding into the idea of celebrity and all the viewers of Netflix who are watching it? You know, are we, are we all in some way complicit? And that was the reason behind the addressing to camera. And I think in some ways, in the case of Luca Magnotta, we're probably all responsible for creating the monster a bit. Perhaps it's time we turn off the machine. You can watch our documentary series, Don't Fuck With Cats, on Netflix now. Bom, meus amigos, você acabou de assistir a um grande trade de lançamento ou de filme já disponível na Netflix. E a gente tem uma grande novidade para você. É o seguinte, você pode, se você ainda não é cliente da Netflix, a gente está deixando no link da descrição desse vídeo, aonde você vai estar tá podendo aí ganhar um mês grátis para você estar tá, fazer a sua assinatura e já assim de cara você ganha um mês grátis aí, e esses sucessos que a gente está deixando aí para você. Se você quiser também comprar o cartão, você já é cliente, quer comprar o cartão para você de 40 40 reais ou 70 reais também a gente vai estar tá deixando a gente não tinha essa opção agora tá deixando aí para você também o link para você comprar esses cartões e tá tendo a sua Netflix aí a todo vapor um grande abraço e continue com a gente se você não foi inscrito por favor se inscreva dê o seu like acione o sininho e você vai estar tá curtindo todos os lançamentos da Netflix